All right, before we get started, full disclosure, window is open. It's a little noisy outside, but I also don't feel like shutting the window because it'll get an excessively hot in here. So you're just gonna have to deal with it. Also, if there's any crackling or popping with the audio, apologies in advance. I'm still working on it. I don't know what's causing it. I'm just thinking it's unavoidable interference. And if it continues to go on, we will move back to the old way of recording audio. But for today's topic, RGB. I've mentioned it in a previous video. It's everywhere. It's in a lot of products. And one of the most frequently asked questions I get when it comes to RGB is, I bought an addressable product, has the three pin five volt connector. My motherboard only has a four pin connector. How do I make it work? And for the longest, my answer has been, there isn't anything you can do. And as it turns out, that answer may not have actually been 100% accurate. Today's video is all about a product that I've discovered that seems to do the trick. The product in question is this, the GamerStorm RGB converter. It is, uh, for those who don't know, GamerStorm is DeepCool's gaming division. Uh, DeepCool is mostly known for its AIOs and other uh, cooling products, but they also have their GamerStorm lineup and apparently this guy is part of it. Now this is a neat little product. Inside the box you get this, which is where all the magic happens, plus you get a cable that splits off in a couple of different directions. This product is pretty simple and remarkable in how it works. It's magnetic, so it just will stick wherever you want. And the whole point is, is you can plug in any number of products. This isn't just limited to addressable products. It has the standard three pin connector, but it also has a special connector that I believe is specific to Gigabyte products. And it also has two connectors that are for standard 12 volt four pin RGB products. So it can also act as a hub. I haven't tested that functionality out, but I've tested virtually everything else out. And at the top is another port that acts as the same kind of connection that Fantex uses, as well as the new Lee and Lee Uni fans that I have sitting on the table here. You can't see those though. Cut soon. I got a video on those soon. This product is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I've been messing with it all week. Um, I decided I, this is the second take doing this video. The first take I decided wasn't going to cut it because I just didn't have enough information on how well it works because I have run into some hiccups occasionally with it. But it's pretty simple how it connects. There's a lead that has a couple of notches. They just go in. It only goes in one way into the bottom. You push it in, you're connected, you're good to go. And then you can wire up everything else. This connector breaks off into two pieces. You have your four pin 12 volt connector that goes to your motherboard. And then you have your SATA power. So let's get this connected and show you a little bit what it's like and what you can expect from this product. All right, so you're not gonna be able to see me for this next part, uh, so I guess you're welcome. So we're gonna go ahead and boot this thing on. So first thing that I'm gonna say, I'm gonna point out this fan, this is a Fractal Design Prisma fan, is the primary connection. And it is then daisy chained up with an Antec strip that is underneath. So you should see both of those light up. Now I haven't disconnected and turned this and reconnected and turned this thing on since the beginning of the last week. So we're about to find out together just how well this works. But as you can see, kinda, the fan lit up and the LED strip lit up. It's Once it's back into Gigabyte's Fusion software, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. But as you can see, the fans are on, the fans are lit up. This is orange, the LED strip is also lit up. So let's go ahead and go over some of the things that I think are important to understand about this product. So what are some of my final thoughts on this? Well, the first thing that I want to make sure we're clear on is that you're going to lose the, ad the addressable functionality of your RGB product. 
Additionally, anything that's proprietary, NZXT, Corsair, things along those lines, aren't going to work with this. It's only gonna work with stuff that has the three pin connector or the same kind of connector that Fantex uses. And in that situation, you'll be fine. Additionally, I have been able to string a number of products together. I've had both the Fractal fan and the LED strip connected along with three Fantex fans and it has shown no issue. So clearly you can continue to add products to this. So if you do have a mixed ecosystem where you've got some Fantex digital RGB products as well as some other three pin connectors, you can you can do it. And I'm, I'm willing to bet that you could add a few RGB standard RGB strips since there's a couple of ports for those. Unfortunately, I don't have any actual traditional RGB products on hand to see that, but I, because it is a powered connection, uh, I am willing to believe that you can do a lot in there. Now, I'm not sure how much because I did not find anywhere on this box or in the manual what the voltage output actually is, but again, was able to connect a lot of stuff. So take that for what it's worth. It is not foolproof though. My Antec RGB strips did give some trouble. In fact, they were extremely problematic. And using those, it would the, the LED strip would just flicker random colors. It wouldn't cooperate. However, once I plugged in something else and then added the Antec strip in, it was fine. So it's just something with the Antec strips. The Fantex products worked fine. Fractal's products work fine. I don't have anything else that I could fully test. So, so you're kind of taking a chance with the product working. But with what I have here, it has not shown any issues. The system has been turned off and started back up repeatedly, and the products have not shown any kind of problems whatsoever. So all in all, I think it's a worthy product. If you have addressable products, you only have a four pin connector on your motherboard and you wanna be able to make them work, this guy will do the trick. It will absolutely work. Uh, you just have to have that SATA power and have the available header on your motherboard to make it make the magic happen. Now, as you can see in front of me, I do have the Lee and Lee Uni fans here. We'll talk about these in another video. I'm excited about those. I also intend to talk about the state of RGB in general. I do think there are some things worth talking about, but for now, I think this is a worthwhile product. If you can find it for about $25 on Amazon, uh, I would definitely consider grabbing it if you have addressable products and you only have the four pin 12 volt header. It works. I haven't run into any major issues outside of the Antec strips. Again, with the Fractal fan, it has not been a problem. The system has been able to been shut off and started repeatedly, no issues. Now for Fantex people, I would still recommend the digital RGB controller. It will retain the addressable features and the controller is good enough. Uh, but if you are dead set on motherboard control Fantex products, the digital Fantex products will work with this as well. It does have a port and since they're daisy chainable, you can add a number of them and it will work without issue. That's all I've got for this video. If you've got any questions about this or if you've used it and have found anything weird about it, let me know down in the comments below. Again, sorry about the noise, but it's the end of, it's the beginning of fall. It's the last few warm days, kids are outside. It's a little noisy, not shutting the window, just how it is. For now though, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, catch you next time.